Hey guys. We have added the background music in the last video. But, there is a problem. I am going to open the main menu scene. Now, I am going to play the game. We will hit play button. We can hear the background music. I am going to make the game over. Now, inside the game over panel, I will select the main menu button. We can see the main menu scene opened, and a new background music has started playing. As a result, currently two background music is playing at a time. We have to fix this. We want, if the user comes to the main menu after making a game over, then the old music will keep playing, and the new audio game object will destroy. So, how we can do that? First of all, we will create a tag called BG Music. Now we will attach the audio game object to this tag. Then we will open the audio script that we have created in the previous video. This script currently has only one line. Because of this line, the audio game object doesn't destroy when a new scene loads. However, we will not remove this line. We will use another function called awake. This is a default function by Unity. When a scene loads, the awake function gets called before the start function. However, Inside the awake function, we will find all the game objects that are under the BG music tag. Currently, we know, there is only one game object under the BG music tag. But, in the game, when the player will back to the main menu scene after having a game over, a new audio game object will be created. So, then the game will have two game objects under the BG music tag. Now, what we have to do is we have to get all game objects that are under the BG music tag and store them into a thing. But, what can store multiple game objects? In this case, we will need something called array. Array is a thing that can store multiple stuff. Such as, a string type array can store multiple string value, a integer type array can store multiple integer value. In the same way, a game object type array can store multiple game object value. Array is the big brother of variable. Variable can hold only one object, but array can hold multiple objects. In this case, we will need game object type array. So I am going to create a game object type array called music object. This square bracket means, this is an array. If you remove the square bracket, it will be a variable. However, now we will get into the awake function. We will find all the game objects that are under the BG music tag and put them into the music object array. So, I am going to write music object equals to. Now, in order to find multiple game objects, we have to write game object dot find game objects with tag. Now, we will write the tag name which is BG music. This will return all the game objects that are available under the BG music tag. We already know that. When the user will get back to the main menu scene after having a game over, there will be two game objects under the BG music tag. The first game object will be the old audio, that didn't destroy when the main menu scene loaded. And the second game object is the new audio game object, that gets generated every time when the scene loads. So, if we delete the second game object from the array, 
then everything should be fine, I mean, only the old background music should play. So, let's do that. First we have to check if there is at least two game objects exist inside the array. So, I am going to make an if condition to check if there is two game objects inside the array. So, if the array length is greater than or equals to 2. Then we will destroy the second game object from the array. So, I am going to write destroy, and then the array name with square bracket. Now, we have to provide the index inside the brackets. Keep in mind, array index starts from 0. If we write 0, then the first game object will be destroyed. If we write 1 as the index, then the second game object will be destroyed. As we want the second audio game object to destroy, so we will write 1. Now, I am going to save the script, and get back to the Unity. Now, we can play the game. Yes, the old background music is only playing. Because, the new audio game object has been destroyed when the scene loaded. So it works as expected. Now, we will do another thing. We are going to open the sample scene which is our game scene. This game will be built for Android. But, still there is no way to play the game in an Android device. Currently, we play the game with our keyboard on the PC. The player jumps only when we press the space key. For Android, it should be like when we touch the screen, the player jumps. So, in order to do that we will create a big transparent button all over the screen. I am going to create the button called Jump Button. Now. We will resize the button like this. We will delete the text object from the button, as we don't need any text for this button. Now, we will make the button transparent. I am going to open the normal color option. Now, at the bottom, we can see A, we will make the A option to 0. Then, we will do the same thing for other colors as well, as you can see. Now, we will open the player controller script, as we have to set up the click event. We have to make the player jump when the button gets pressed. So, I am going to create a new function called jump button. Now, we will copy the jump code along with the if condition and paste it inside the jump button function. Now, we will delete the space key input. So, now the condition is, if the is game over is false, and the can jump is true, then the player will jump. So, now we will save the script and get back to the Unity editor. Now, Select the jump button. Make an on-click event in the inspector. 
we have to attach a game object here. We will attach the player game object as this game object has the player controller script. Now, we will select the jump button function from the player controller script, as you can see. Now, I am going to play the game. If we click on the screen, the player jumps. So, now the game should be playable on Android. But, there is still one problem. First, I am going to make the game over. Now, if we click on a button from the game over panel, we can see the button is not working. This is because, the transparent button is over the game over panel. So when we click, the transparent button is getting clicked. So, what we can do is, inside the hierarchy window, we will take the game over panel down to the jump button. This will fix the problem, because the game over panel is disabled and it only gets enabled when the game is over. So, now we can play the game again. Yes, everything works as expected. So, this is it for this video and I will see you in the next video.